development company for the Five Kingdoms. I am joined on stage by Bolon. He's our head of community and player engagement, and Sunbear, head of Vista. So we are going to be uh, tackling this one as a trio, which is nice, because I'm usually up here alone. It's nice to have some, some friends with me. Uh, we're going to be walking through the core concepts of DeFi Kingdoms. So DeFi Kingdoms, our slogan there, command your legion, claim your legacy. So for those that are completely new to DFK, hopefully this will be helpful. For those that know about us, there's going to be a little, a little nugget at the end that will likely be exciting for you. Is it working? Looks like the clicker is working. All right, so the first core concept. Um, it's about you as the player. What is your identity? You are a commander of heroes, a commander of your assets in the fantasy RPG world. From there, you go on to compete with other players. So what's the point of building all your assets and becoming powerful, strong, if not to compete with others and to rise up? To go out and adventure in strategic battles within this fantasy world. If any of us have played Zelda, Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft, a lot of these games from, for, for many of us, our childhood, um, it comes to life in DeFi Kingdoms with that pixel art, bringing the nostalgic feels out, and um, powering it through blockchain. Uh, the next core concept we'll get to is really where blockchain technology comes to life, preparing our legions and our heroes to battle, to compete with others, on uh, equipping them with uh, various resources and um, equipment to make them stronger. World exploration is something we're working towards. We'll talk about the concept a little bit more, some visual aids, but the world of blockchain gaming comes to life in DeFi Kingdoms in that each blockchain that we're on is its own realm. So to explore those worlds through the various features in DFK is the long-term goal and vision of the game. Now the last concept we'll get to is the main reason why we're here. Powering it through Web3, blockchain technology, where you own your assets, assets appreciating through gameplay, completes the core concepts of DeFi Kingdoms. So hopping into the first one, we have our heroes over here animated. They're moving around a little bit, showing you, um, you know, they're ready for battle. Battle's been something we've been really focused on this year. Uh, the combat system was released, and that's really where you know your heroes are actually starting to come to life, from the static cards to that. But let's talk about the player. So we said you are a commander. You're a commander of a legion of heroes. The whole point is to look at what is in the game what it has to offer and how you as a commander can play that game under different uh, kind of approaches or goals. Uh, you could be playing for fun. You could be a play to earn type of person where you're kind of farming and feeding those assets to those who are there to play for fun. You could want to compete with others and be at the top of leaderboards or kind of be in the shadows. Whatever it is, you get to pick how you play. But at the core of it, commanding your assets, building your assets, appreciating them, um, is one of the core reasons to play. If you look at the last two years, we've been live now for two years, and every time a new feature comes out, people maximize it. You see here the cards representing our hero NFTs. They're different colors. That resembles different rarities. Um, the most rare, the mythic type of card that comes out is the hardest to find, and long term it's going to be some of the strongest heroes. Our community has been so focused on the minting and summoning of those heroes from day one. And two years later, you know, every couple of weeks or month when a new feature comes out, these heroes are being able to do more and more things. As a commander, your responsibilities and what you can do kind of grow. So a big part of it is not only in the gameplay, but leading into the gameplay, preparing your legion of assets. So there's a lot of strategy that comes into it on knowing which combination of certain heroes will result in the desired either visual or game-related ability that comes out of the summoning or minting event. Um, the type of pets that you might be equipping to those heroes. Are you looking to quest? Are you looking to fight? Are you looking to compete? Um, it all comes out in this first concept. You know, one thing that's really important that you understand about these NFTs is they are actually dynamic. Nothing static about them. They're 
They're going to be summoned into the world. We've had over 700,000 of them summoned into this ecosystem. And they're dynamic in ways that you can level them up. You can add other NFTs to them. For example, maybe you hatched a pet, and that pet attaches to it, bonds to that NFT hero, and it follows it around and helps it out. Maybe you're minting things like weapons and armor and clothing and things like that that are also attached to this NFT. And every time you go to level it up in a meditation, in the meditation area, um, you're actually molding and guiding the leveling up process of this hero. Maybe you're turning it into more of a fighter, a warrior, or more of a gatherer. So, so many ways these change and are dynamic. And even when you bridge this NFT, it brings all those other NFT pieces that are attached to it with it. It's not like any NFT you played before. So, one thing I just want to say before we move on, there's a lot of games out there in this space. We talked about Web 2.5 games, Web 3 games. Uh, and DeFi Kingdoms, what you get is a very deep set of options and knowledge base and strategy and future tactics. If you're a gamer that loves to dive in, minute max super things, join communities where you're talking about how to make the most of the gameplay, how to stand out from the crowd, this is definitely the game for you. Um, there are games out there that barely touch the technology and we love working with them, but our team has some of the best minds that are pushing that Web3 blockchain technology to the limits every step of the way. So a huge shout out to our developers, huge shout out to the pixel artists as well. I think it's quite beautiful, it comes to life for a lot of us that grew up with those other games. It's very nostalgic and um, yeah, hopefully we're representing well for them. So on to our next core concept, we're going to hand it over to Wolan, since who better to talk about player versus player than our head of player engagement? Uh, yes. So as Summer said, you know, there are many strategies that you can take in DeFi Kingdoms to being successful, but some of those strategies do involve fighting. Uh, Dreamer put it nicely, you know, why would you not want to be the best? The reality is, why would you not want to crush your company? You want to be the best, but you want everybody to know it and to feel it and to fear you. Uh, because that's the fun part. So, for any of you that are, you know, RPG gamers, uh, like most of us, uh, combat is a core part of that gameplay, and PvP in particular, that direct player-to-player -player engagement, is a very large part of that. So to that end, there's many ways to engage with that, and some of those are, um, particularly important in opening the social aspects of DeFi Kingdoms up. So we have things like guilds, where players can unite towards a common cause. Again, maybe that cause isn't fighting, but maybe it is. Uh, you know, within those guilds and then against each other, you have tournaments, so your guilds can compete against each other. Your guilds can determine not only who the best player is, but who the best guild is. We also have, as Dreamer mentioned, different realms on different blockchains. So maybe there's a tournament between those realms to determine whose players can show up the best. Uh, we also have not only our combat system, but also our DFK tool, what we call a mini game, which is a trading card based game. That's what you see the video of. Uh, it's a much more simplified player versus player experience, but it has built in ladder system already. So as you progress through the ranks, if you win and progress through the ranks, you are automatically unlocking rewards from smart contracts just by progressing through the tool system. So combat is a, a very crucial part of the game, and player versus player unlocks a lot of very fun social interactions. And while I do absolutely think that you should try to crush your competition, the key is having fun while you're doing it, and also having fun with your competition. And that's what's really cool about it that you get that social activation, you get to play with your friends, you get to play with your enemies, and you get to have a good time. So very, uh, very excited about that, and that also gives us a little bit of esports as well, because who doesn't want to watch? You can stream, you can watch that content, um, and so you have the opportunity there as well to grow a following and grow an audience. Yeah, you know, we talk about mass adoption a lot in the space, and I think that this concept is going to be very important to master and continue to refine to invite more people in the space. It's one thing for one player to play a game and enjoy it. It's another thing for multiple players to compete and enjoy it together. But when you then put that on display and make it consumable for other audiences to even just watch somebody else, summoning heroes, what is their strategy? How does that result? 
and then dominating or crushing others in the space. Um, this is what we're working towards to not only you know, be true to our current fan base, but to grow it. One thing that I want to touch on, uh, we talked about being a very Web3, like, maxing game. Uh, the ladder system, all the rewards, every step of the way. So as you get to a higher ranking in our mini game, it's all on cheat. It immediately pops up and says, congrats, you've now made legendary ABC uh, ranking. Um, here are your rewards, and immediately it's released to the wallet of the player. That's revolutionary. Um, the future of us being able to connect rewards that come through higher levels through the blockchain where assets are ready and waiting for them, released to the player, um, is, is kind of unlocking the next phase of Web3 gaming. So if you're like me, you love PvP. But there is one thing better than PvP. And that is our next slide. Debatable. But we'll have a PvE next. PvE. Strategic battling and adventure, and dungeon crawling, monsters, challenges, big enemies that you have to bring down. That, to me, it is better, I'll be honest. But they both have their place, and they are both very important parts of any RPG. So you have things like dungeons, where you have you know ongoing battles that you have to get making through. You have epic monsters and what we're calling hunts, which is what this video is. This is going to be our, our first hunt. We're calling it the Mad Boar. Uh, and evil influence has been poking its head up, and our heroes need to fight back to protect the realm. Uh, but it also opens up the door for things like group campaigns, where you can get together again with your friends and do that dungeon crawl. It also opens the door for limited time events, which war hunts will be a limited time event. Uh, and limited time events are really fun, and we'll, we'll circle back a little bit on that in a, a later slide as well. But limited time events are a lot of fun because they offer limited time rewards. So you have unique rewards, unique items that are only available during that time from that event. So it's just an incentivization to participate and to have fun with those events. Because if somebody wants that reward and they did not get it from the event, their only way to get it is from you. And that loops back to the Web3 activation of everything being tokenized. They can buy that item from you directly in game. So to break down a little bit what you're seeing up here, you know, the first slide we talked about the heroes represented in kind of a card fashion. The brand shows like the visual genes, and then the various facts show all the things integrated, all the metadata, the, the, st the stats related to combat, uh, the abilities. They're now all coming to life little by little. Um, for a few months, we've had kind of a testing grounds where you can, can get to know your heroes, see how they look, how they move, and then pick through a number of abilities to create your own strategy on how you want to work together um, in the battle. Well, the hunts that was just mentioned that is going to be releasing now, soon, bitch, very soon, um, that's where it comes to life. Now it's an actual game with rewards related to the hunt, with the enemies that fight back where you can fail. And it's not only kind of random, oh, I didn't get what I wanted. If you don't play right or are prepared or are kind of level, you're not going to be able to beat the challenge. So this is a, a huge leap forward for the DMK game players. And we're really excited to deliver the fights of hunts. And there are more hunts to come. They will be unique. They will probably be unique by chain and realm. They will be unique in their rewards and unique in difficulty. So there are so many ways to play this game. One that makes us a DeFi game, a true Web3 game, is the tokenized economy. When you think about traditional uh, RPG games, you think about all of those items that you're grinding, that you're going out, you're finding, you're gathering, and then what you can do with those items. For the last two years, we've been building that economy, and now it's really fun because that economy and all those items are used to support the heroes within the game to be able to do all these amazing things. So what have these heroes been doing? A lot of transactions, right? They've been doing a lot of questing. On DFK chain alone, our subnet on Avalanche, we have done over 500 million transactions. We're beating out Avalanche, Polygon, Ethereum on transactions because these heroes are going out and they're foraging for items like plants, they're fishing. In fact, <laughs> this is one of those ERC-20s that they fish for, right? This is a bloater. It's one of our community's favorite little items that you can go out and you can find in these quests. They're also mining 
and gardening and finding items that they can take and do amazing things with in the game. For example, you can go to the alchemist and create potions that are going to help you revitalize your health or, uh, or your stamina. Uh, or you're going to go to the stone carver and get that stone that's going to help you have better stats when you're summoning a new hero. Or you're going to go grab that crystal or, or you know, create that crystal so that you can go and, and level up your hero in more amazing ways with bigger stats. I love this little guy, this little blur. I see it throughout the audience. Does anybody want this guy? Anybody interested in a blur? I see a hand right there. Here you go, sir. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so there's so many ways to play the game. Yeah, you might be like, hold on, you want to do PvE. And really, I mean, he gets excited about that. Grimmer's PvP, he wants to take down those opponents. I like going in and really gathering those, those resources and figuring out when is the best time to really make those potions and sell them. I like selling those items. I look for like when there's an event coming up. Oh wow, there's a bundling event. I'm gonna go get those items that people are really gonna enjoy and go get them on the marketplace in the in the game and put them up and, and, and make a little bit from that profit. Yeah, you know, some people come up and they're like, wow, we see you, we see you guys, we've heard about you, but I'm, I'm not much of a gamer, but I like D5. So tell me about why are you D5 kingdoms? And this is where the crafting, the, the economy, all of the integrated DeFi aspects come to life and can be applicable to that user. Those that want to be competitive, we have things that are applicable to those. Those that just want like a fun, low-stress game with their friends, that's where that PvE comes in. So definitely something for everybody. All right, this for me is really important for everybody to see the long-term vision of DeFi Kingdoms. When you hop in, um, and as mentioned, if you're on different chains, you will see a different game. So on the DFK chain, which represents Avalanche uh, Realm that we made in collaboration with them, it's kind of wintry, icy, Viking-esque feeling. If you go over to Clayton, you'll see more of like a medieval green, lush uh, experience. A lot of the gameplay overlaps. You can kind of choose where you want to be, but a portion of it is unique to those areas. So traveling across chain becomes necessary if you want to unlock all parts of the game. But in the future, we're going to take travel to a deeper step, a further step. We're going to raise the bar on the overall experience because if you take a step back and you see this beautiful map, and you have your heroes, you know, maybe one, two, there are some of hundreds, a legion of hundreds of heroes. They kind of exist everywhere and nowhere. You go and you click through, I'm gonna like go fishing. You know, there might be some animation and I'll see what I catch, but I'm not seeing it happen or where it's happening. Uh, we talk about PvP, when, when you go to duel with your friends, you know, it's happening in one area, but you don't necessarily have your heroes have to go anywhere to meet another uh, competitor to do that. We talk about the hunts that are being released soon. Yeah, they're on the map, but you're not really traveling to the list. When travel is developed and comes out, it's going to change the game. You're going to be able to fish at different parts of the map, across different realms on different chains. Those will probably have different fish available, or maybe one will be biting more than the other, so the yield will be higher. At the same time, you'll have opportunities to battle boars or other types of hunts at different parts of the map. You'll see here a representation of a little game piece that represents a like a party of hero entities traveling to a mine to go and mine gold. Um, so this is where the commander of their heroes is introduced with scarcity of choice. I only have so many heroes. My heroes can only do so many things at once. What do I as a player want to do? If I want to do everything, my legion must be quite large. The assets to arm that legion and equip them are going to be uh, are going to have to be as large as my legion of heroes. And if I'm playing the player earn aspect of farming, the PvP competitive aspect, and the PvE aspect, think about how deep the experience can go for the player. Or you can even choose. But either way, it comes down to where do you want to be with your assets? Where do you want to travel? As you're traveling, it could be quite perilous. You might just be going to fish, but you can be attacked and have to go through battles in order to unlock the area with the desired feature. As a player today, this is quite simple. You choose what you want to do and you're kind of passively doing it. The DeFi Kingdoms of Tomorrow is going to change that uh, to be much more of a gamified experience that is challenging, that um, integrates land 
time and resource management. If you can't tell, we're quite excited for travel. All right, anything I missed on here? Seems like no. The last core concept, which is the reason why we're all here, really, uh, is one three activation. Otherwise, this would just be another game out there, which um, some might ask, hey, if, if there are games that are taking you know a decade to create with like hundreds of millions going into development that look beautiful in animation, why would somebody want to have a simplified game? Um, Web three is a big part of that because you know when I was younger, I think between 18 and 19 years old, I played Final Fantasy 11, and I don't remember how. I think it was over a year. I looked at my time played, which is like the worst decision. I don't know if anybody ever pays attention to that. No, don't look at that. Don't look at it. And I was just like, oh, this feature here is like 31 days. I'm like, I've only been doing this for 11 months. And I realized how much time I invested. Now, it was fun. I didn't regret it. But I didn't have anything really to show for it. Imagine if during those 31 days, I had heroes that were NFTs that accumulated all of that experience and were worth more because it took time to actually do it. There's no way around it. All of the resources I could have gathered, I could have actually been maybe making money during that time. Um, I, maybe my profile could represent achievements that otherwise when I left the game just kind of die off with my game and the memory. Um, so today, Web3 blockchain gaming the potential, it changes it for the player. It becomes an investment where fun can also equal value. And DeFi Kingdoms, we have very rich DeFi elements that come live in Web3. Not only is all of the, the playable assets and the tokens, or sorry, playable assets and the resources, not only are they all tokens, but we have DeFi protocols integrated in. We have our own AMN protocol, our DEX, that's uh, shown as gardens to make it easier for people to understand what emissions are, what is staking. We have various NFT marketplaces built, customized for our assets to make it easier to sort through and learn and find the specific you know, uh, tokens, assets, NFTs that you're looking for. More recently, we uh, released an order book style DEX that make it so all the low liquidity stuff is tradable peer to peer. That changes the game for a lot of people because otherwise you have to make actual pairs you go to make a trade, your trade is too large relative to the pairs that are staked on, on the chain, and you're kind of stuck. You get bad prices, or uh, can't really have that liquid market. So Web3 activation is very important to us. It stacks on all of the previous con concepts, and we'll continue to do so, because when people ask the question, you know, why would I get in a game that's maybe a little bit more simple than the other options out there, it's because of this. The thing I'll add is interoperability. That is really where, if I'm a traditional gamer and I'm like, ah, I don't really like crypto, uh, but blockchain's interesting. I, I watched Ready Player One, I kind of get the whole interoperability thing. Oh wow, in DeFi Kingdoms you can take your hero and you can use that in a new game, Dragon's Crossing, that's launching on the FK chain. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I heard about Wagner Games, they're doing something cool. Oh, you're working on a collaboration where my hero, my asset, as I travel to different games, does something for me. Now if I go back to my Final Fantasy XI days, if everything I did there contributed to half or more of the games I'm, I'm playing today, that ROI of time invested starts to multiply and grow exponentially. We are so excited about our interoperability, but it kind of takes us as, a, as like a building community to evolve as well. Because everybody says, oh, that sounds great. But it's hard for people to spend the money to work on it. We're starting to see more of that. We're ready and willing. But uh, I think in the future, that mass adoption will only come when all of the gamers realize we're not trying to compete. We're trying to make a cohesive community of games that talk to and work with each other. Because as we all rise together, the traditional gamers will see that value, which is nothing compared to the web two or like traditional gaming communities, and convert. Oh, I love that so much. And you know, just, to, just to capitalize on that a little bit, you know, I've been asking myself, what are we? Are we a, a protocol that's meant to um, educate about DeFi? Absolutely. That was where we started. Like, we wanted to create something that people can go to and understand the concepts of, of DeFi easier. Are we a game? Absolutely. We're a place where people can come and play and have fun and enjoy. 
Are we a place where there's a collection of NFTs? Yes, hero NFTs. You can summon and create, purchase, sell. They're, you're, you're like right there in the game. And, and, uh, and also the, the, the pet NFTs that everyone loves that are so adorable that you can match. For so many different things, are we an interoperable uh, metaverse or other games can come and be a part of our game and we can go to theirs? Absolutely. There's just so much to be my kingdoms that can be put in one box. And if you're wondering, am I a gamer? I talked to somebody earlier, they said, I'm really not a gamer, but I'm interested in this. You're a commander of some kind. I'm in command in some way in DeFi Kingdoms and ask you All right, we got 10 more minutes. We're gonna try to finish up in five. So if you're thinking of questions for this, we are gonna open up here in five minutes. Um, but moving on to a few things, uh, you know, what have we been working on? If you, if you haven't heard of it already, there's a really cool show called The Next Crypto Gem. There's some exciting judges on there. Uh, George from Cryptos R Us, give a shout out. He's represented on there. Uh, Brian Diaz is a huge investor and an uh, impactful uh, human in the space, as well as uh, Leia Halpern as well. Uh, we're competing with a few others um, on the show, but we also learned a ton. So I think the filming of that was earlier this year where when we were done, we took a step back and said, okay, that was cool, it was entertaining, it was a competition. But what did we learn? What, what are other awesome competitors doing? What was important to the judges? What was some of the offline follow-up feedback that we got? And what can we do about it? And we want to take a moment to talk about what we've done now related to that feedback. We also want to invite you, if you haven't checked it out, District TV is the app. You can view it on demand. It's going to be hitting uh, various TV channels as well, I believe, next week. So uh, go check out next Crypto Gen. Here's October 2nd. Phew. It's okay. And just so you know, Dreamer, if you didn't catch that, is one of the four finalists on that feature. Very exciting. And so like Dreamer said, there, there's some things that we learned from that process over the last three months. We've really been working to improve, especially the user experience when they come to our game, right? Web3 players, they know what to do. They know how to do a wallet. They know how to get the tokens. They know how to do all these things. Web2, they don't. They're not used to it, they get scared by it, whatever it might be. So what we've done is we've actually worked with a partner to make it so that when someone comes to game.defikingdoms.com, they don't need to build a wallet, they don't need to have those pieces, it's gonna be in the background. All they gotta do is use their social media to log in, frictionless, and they're playing the game. The other thing we're doing also is making it really easy to do these processes like purchase tokens or purchase NFTs right in the game without having to leave. We've got great on-ramp partners that are gamified. Click on that little guy, that little NPC in, in, in the docks. Go to which on-ramp you want, in-game, purchase what you need to, and then play. Yeah, especially on the wallet side, uh, not only simplicity of getting in, which is massive, you know, being able to just put in a social login and have a smart contract wallet created for you in the background, you don't have to do anything, but even beyond that, you really don't even necessarily know that it's there most of the time. It doesn't have transaction back up, transaction pop-ups. It uses session keys to automatically sign transactions. So you approve the session key for a period of time, and after that, you don't have constant MetaMask spam. You know, Sunbear mentioned earlier, we've done 500 million transactions on DFK chain alone in like 18 months. That's a lot of clicking through transaction pop-ups. So removing that really enhances the game experience to feel more like you're just natively playing a video game. Uh, and then the last part of that was the tutorials. So we've actually added in-game tutorials to walk you through the basics because it's really important for people to be able to come in and get a starting point off the jump. You know, we have amazing community members, amazing content creators within those communities, or within our community. I would actually challenge what Flux said earlier. They said they have the best community, but they clearly haven't joined our Discord. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to detract from that and we'll never replace them. But giving players an easy starting point in game was crucial. And from there, they can go discover that content on the topic of their choice. So to recap, what we learned was Bears and Engineer are so high in Web3. DeFi Kingdoms makes it even higher, given we have so much to learn. We've worked on breaking those down, making it easier to get at the game. Wallet created a dynamic tutorial to, to uh, help you understand a new bazaar to make trading easier. Bazaar is kind of our order book style decks that I mentioned earlier. So really proud of what we've done so far and uh, what we're going to be working on next.
Yeah, so I'm gonna hit this one pretty quick. Uh, from a player experience perspective, we have what we're calling Expeditions, which is a new way to quest. So it takes a little bit of the manual out of it, makes it a lot easier for players to manage that region of heroes by being able to assign them to questing and then come back later to collect them rather than needing to assign collect, assign collect. Uh, and then on the combat side, so every single one of our classes, which we currently have 22 different unique classes of heroes, has 31 unique abilities. So we're talking about 600 and some change unique abilities programmed into this combat system. There's a lot of interplay there. So right now we have three classes with their codec, uh, what we're calling their codexes, their skill list, available, but we're really focused on adding more classes and getting those functionalities built out for some additional ones, as well as what we mentioned earlier with the void hunts. That's a big opportunity, a big, uh, big challenge, and a really exciting time for us. It will be the first time that players really see their heroes come to life against these enemies. Uh, we do have the combat testing grounds as well, where players can try it out with their heroes and see what the combat system looks like. But this will really put it into action, and it will also introduce uh, equipment into the game. So the War Hunt has five unique loot drops, so three that are silhouetted and two that are mystery boxes, because we're not giving any hints. Those are very, very rare, and what we were referring to earlier about limited time events and limited time drops. Those five pieces of equipment will only be available from War Hunts. They are very rare, they are very exclusive, we are very excited for that, and they will immediately be usable by the players that find them. That said, every hero needs a weapon, every hero needs armor. So, there's gotta be a way to get some outside of these very rare drops. Will it be as good? No, but it'll be something. So, what we haven't shown before, but we'll show you now, is what our equipment shopkeeper for basic level one, or tier one equipment will look like. So I have the clicker, but I just I wanna make sure that people wanna see. So the, the gameplay aspects, the DeFi aspects, those that are looking to find the materials for all of these, you know, the play to earn aspect, this again is taking that step forward in the overall experience. So I know that we're pretty much out of time, but if we are not gonna get, get kicked off, if there are any pressing questions, now's the time. Unless they're gonna come kick off. I mean, I got the mic dreamer right here. Let me ask you a basic one. Are you tracking playtime? Where are you? Where are you? Are you tracking playtime? Because I'm curious now, since playtime is such a big deal, are you tracking playtime? Are we going to be able to look that up? Uh, yeah, you know we're not. But I think we're going to talk to the old dude and see if we can track it. You know, one big thing we haven't talked about are achievements and tokenizing the achievements. And people have, we have all of the data on chain to be able to track how you know consecutive players and days and time log. You know, getting that a 30 day badge of playtime I think would be a fun one. And a lot of people just go on there and listen to the music. Well, so people are just running the music. Any other questions? With uh, the equipment, can you farm in game currencies and then use that to purchase the equipment or different items? Yes, yeah, so you can absolutely question uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question was if you could uh, use other, like farm in game to get currencies to then buy equipment. Absolutely, that's kind of the the method. Uh, so you take your heroes, you send them questing, you can, everything that you bring back, you can then sell. And then you can use that in game currency to buy equipment, to bring back better rewards, to sell, to buy equipment, and it's a never ending loop if you want it to be. Uh, and then also you can use that, that the rewards from questing to also craft your own equipment as well, which you can also sell to other players. And maybe to add, so one thing that to make clear, we, we're not minting and selling anything at a fixed price. This is all controlled by the community. 
and a portion of the fees that are generated in the game are actually feeding into a centralized place where people can stake a token and get a, a portion of the fees to them. So when we say buy and sell, it's really peer-to-peer, player-to-player. We are creating the environment for people to create and build that economy, um, rather than us saying, at this fixed price, we're going to mint and sell this for $5. That is not something that's a current feature. If it ever becomes one, it'll probably be non-gameplay or aesthetic. We are also constantly innovating ways that players can, like you said, gather and then use those resources to get something else. For example, the bazaar is something that's been recently um, uh, put into the game. It's a place where players can go and sell player to player any item, any item on chain, any item within the game, which is already mentioned, um, which which is, is just really exciting. I'm excited about that. Piece. Awesome, guys! This was a great presentation. So we're gonna go ahead and yell something here. Yeah. So uh, kind of pop fun here, but I uh, usually end bullish at the end. So if you want to join us on three. Um, we're happy to be here. Check us out, DeFiKingdoms.com. Hop on our Discord. We're in the back too if you want some merch. But uh, three, one, two, three. Boy!